All right, good afternoon. Here we are with another video installment. Um, just a short update today. We're making progress down here on our uh, 42 Lincoln Continental Resurrection Project. You can see a <laughs> classic Continental tire kit, of course. Um, anyhow, I've been somewhat busy doing some other things lately, but uh, decided to come down here today and mess around and see what's going on, as this car had quite a few problems when I got it. And uh, <clears throat> you can see now we've got the engine out, which I have that back at my shop at my house. We're going to do a little bit of work to it. I'm going to put a new clutch and flywheel in it, and I'm also going to tear it tear it down and inspect it, make sure that it's in good shape, and then anything that engine will need, it's going to get. Um, do it one time while you got it out. I don't want to have to take it out again. But um, anyway, and you can see down in here I have this clutch disc set up on the transmission because this car had a problem inside the or at least inside the drivetrain I couldn't put pinpoint the problem but when you put the car in gear of course with it running you go to lift up on the clutch and you could actually feel something in the drivetrain taking up slack when I mean take up slack you'd feel some you it would you could feel it take up slack and then it would bang and then it would start moving and for a while I thought the problem was inside the rear axle <clears throat> at the back and of course these having a torque tube and closed enclosed drivetrain it's not the easiest thing to pinpoint but with the speedometer gear removed from the torque tube and of course I have the interior out and the floor panels out but uh, you can see the drive shaft moving but it was if you sat there and worked and just kind of held the clutch in just the right spot it was the flywheel was, was warped so bad that it actually would rattle and bang and I couldn't pinpoint it because of the way the drivetrains are on these old Lincolns and Fords of every Ford from 1908 to 1948, the whole drivetrain is a lot like a tuning fork, and it has a tendency to transmit sound and vibration all the way up and down it. However, once I removed the engine, I grabbed the old clutch disc, because I've already put a new clutch on this once, and we're going to have to actually do it again because the flywheel was warped so bad. But this car is actually locked in low gear, and it didn't, and it made no difference what gear this transmission was in. It would do it in first, second, third, or reverse, and did it in every gear. Um, but now I think the problem is in the transmission itself, because with it locked in gear, normally you'd only be able to move them, you know, a little bit. This one here, I can actually move it almost a full core. It actually goes. A quarter of a turn, and I mind. Like I said, I have the parking brake set and the and the uh, wheels chalked, and of course it's sitting on the ground in gear. And that that you can actually turn that that far before anything happens. And so there's apparently my problem is now in the transmission. And after I jack the car up. Had a friend of mine come over and help me. I could observe the uh, drive shaft inside the rear end, or inside the torque tube with the looking through the speedometer gear uh, port. And I shook it back and forth. He shook it back and forth, and it has about the right. The rear axle seems to have about the right amount of free play in the in the gear set. You can hear it taking slack, and it just barely, you know, just barely move it, and it's. You can hear the slack a little bit and it's moving the drive shaft within what I would consider to be somewhat normal, a somewhat normal amount of free play in the axle. But the transmission, on the other hand, has definitely got something seriously wrong. And I'm going to be willing to bet it may even be in the overdrive or in the rear shaft or cluster gear, whichever you want to call it. Something is seriously not right inside of it, so. I'm going to be hunting down another transmission, and I'm going to pull this one out. 
Now, of course, that's much easier to do with the engine out. I don't have to actually pull the rear end out to get the transmission out now, which makes my life a lot easier. Matter of fact, to do a clutch and transmit clutch job in one of these cars, or even a transmission job, I would just recommend pulling the engine and not the transmission because it's actually less work. But um, it just depends on how you feel about it. You can do it either way. But uh, it took me it took me eight and a half hours to pull the rear end out, the the interior out, the floor out, and then the transmission out. And to pull the engine only took me about four hours. To pull just the engine out and that was starting with an engine that I actually started ran warmed up fully before I pulled it let it cool off a little bit drained the fluids all out of it I wanted to get it warm so all the oil would come out and I drained everything out and then removed it something else we have going on down in here and it was a problem it's gonna be like I said I may have pointed this out in another video but somebody Something must have happened with this front exhaust pipe, and we're not sure what happened here. But somebody bent that. It's all bent and kinked badly. It's actually compressed to the point where it's actually uh, severely restricting the left side of the engine. So, And that pipe is detachable. It does come apart down there. So I'm going to pop that apart and attempt to salvage and repair that. But... Uh, the rest of the exhaust system on this car is in really good shape, except for the muffler. I'm going to get a new muffler. It doesn't exactly have the correct muffler on there now, but that's okay. Wherever they had the exhaust fitted for this car, they must have bought pipes from somebody. But the muffler is definitely not the right type, but it's just a cheap oval muffler. They ought to normally have a round one, and I'll, just, I'll find a muffler to fit the size pipes and a length that it will work. And being the rest of the exhaust system is as nice as it is, I'm not going to mess with it any further than that. Um, just fix the front pipe. You can see, I think you can see the kinks in this down in here. It's, 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 this is, this sex, this piece of pipe is, it's junk. So I'm going to have to make a new one. But uh, with that transmission uh, as slopped as it is, it's definitely going to have to be replaced. I would actually entertain the thought of taking it to a shop and rebuilding it, but I have a funny feeling I'm still going to probably need another transmission for parts. So it's just worth it to just buy a complete gearbox with the overdrive. And so I'm going to be putting my feelers out on friends on Facebook or some of the Facebook groups I belong to and a few other places I know to look. And, uh, of course, it's got its cover on the front. <laughs> keep things covered up to keep from beating up the paint, but... But anyway, just thought I'd shoot out a quick video. Um, like I said, we just film it how it is. Um, like I said, and then of course today was a kind of a warm day today. It's probably about 40 degrees. So I've been down here running the, the other two cars, the Packard and the Hudson here. Uh, just give them a little run, let them run a little while, warm them up, keep things lubricated. I don't drive my cars in the wintertime, but I do start them up and run them. Work the you know work the brakes a little bit, roll them back and forth with the clutch. Um, that helps keep things in good working order. And I don't do it like once a week. I probably do it once every other month or so. Maybe once a month if it's a fairly warm winter. Because around I live in Northeast Ohio. You don't if you want to you want to keep your car nice. You don't take it out until about oh the end of May when they find when all the salts finally washed off the roads. But. Uh, because they use so much salt around here, it's unreal. But uh, anyway, like I said, uh, this video, I, when I put it up, it's going to be about New Year's Day. So all of you out in YouTube land, Happy New Year. And hopefully 2021 will be better than 2020. I'm certain I'm not the only person that said that. And with that, everyone uh, stay safe out there and... Have a great day. Thank you.